Again, a pleasant uh, evening to each and every one of you, my brothers and sisters. We will continue with our uh, series, which we had started last Friday, the series of Knowing the Real Jesus. And we have uh, studied why it is necessary that we know the real Jesus. First of all, because to know the Lord Jesus is to have eternal life. And this is eternal life that you, they may know you, that's the Father, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. So that's the first important uh, thing, why we need to know the real Jesus. The second is that there are counterfeit Jesus. Uh, we are warned that uh, we are warned that uh, there will be another Jesus, there will be another gospel and another spirit. And uh, warnings are abound in the Bible about the counterfeits. And so it is it is very, very important. It is actually not only essential but necessary that we know the real Jesus. Marami pong katukayo. Okay? Marami pong katukayo ang ating uh, Panginoon. There are so many namesakes of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Philippines, even in cup fights, you know, there is what they call as Christo. <laughs> That's the that's the fake uh, crystal. <clears throat> so it behooves uh, upon us that we know the real Jesus, and of course, knowing the real Jesus, and this is the third point, knowing the real Jesus is growing in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, Christian growth is about knowing. Jesus more and more. We will never come to a point in our life now that we can say we know everything about the Lord Jesus. We will never come to that point. And I believe with all my heart that even eternity, it will take eternity for us to really know the Lord Jesus Christ. There will always be new revelation of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And its revelation, you know, we will be amazed. And so we will now uh, carry on with our uh, series of studies on the real Jesus. And uh, we also studied the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have studied that. His name, we, we, we actually studied the etymology of the name of uh, the Lord. The name is taken from a compound Hebrew name, uh, Yahweh Yeshua. Or if you are using the Greek uh, name, Jehovah Yeshua. And... Uh, to shorten this, they just say Joshua. Right? Joshua actually is the uh, name of Jesus, translated in English as Jesus, and translated in Tagalog as Jesus, in Arabic as uh, Isa. And whatever you uh, the translation is, we are referring to the same person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And his name is, according to uh, Philippians 2, is the name above every name. Why? Well, first of all, because of the reputation of the one who has the name, Jesus. His reputation is so great. His reputation is so so high and lifted up because of what he has done to save mankind. Because his name is 
Yahweh, Yeshua, and we have studied the meaning of it. It means, I am Savior. Yan po ang ibig sabihin ng pangalan ng ating Panginoong Yesus. Ako ang tagapagligtas. Yahweh is I am, and Yeshua is Savior. I am Savior. So, kaya po ko, napaka taas ng pangalan ng ating Panginoon. That name is the name above every name na binigay sa ating Panginoong Sukristo ng kanyang ama. Alright. Now, we will study one uh, aspect of the Lord Jesus Christ. And usually, what we are doing here, what we will be doing, we will study the aspects uh, in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ where Christians actually misunderstood the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, in a way, we will be correcting the wrong impressions of Christians on the Lord Jesus Christ. It is, uh, it is sad to know that we Christians have uh, wrong impressions of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we will come to know, we will come to know what are those wrong impressions that we need to be corrected. So the first, uh, the first character trait that I'm going to uh, talk about, the Lord Jesus Christ, is that Jesus is a sociable and joyful person. Now, you must have seen movies, especially now that uh, you can easily watch movies. Uh, from the internet. You must have seen movies about the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I remember there was only one movie and unfortunately this movie did not become uh, popular where the Lord Jesus Christ uh, has been portrayed as a sociable and joyful uh, person. In most of the films, you know, created. Jesus, the Jesus that the films, the filmmakers have portrayed, do not even know how to laugh. The Jesus there, you know, do not even uh, know how to play with kids. But the real Jesus was a sociable and joyful Jesus. There was only one instance in his life when he was called the man of sorrows. And that was when he took upon himself our sins, beginning at the Garden of Gethsemane until his death on the cross. Those were the only moments when Jesus Christ was a man of sorrows. The rest of his life, he was sociable and he was a joyful, very joyful person. I read an account by a Jewish rabbi who, who is a Christian about the story of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said in his book, in the Jewish context, many of the stories that Jesus told were actually funny stories. Like for instance, when he, when he uh, rebuked the scribes and the Pharisees, that to the Jews, that was a funny incident. It's like uh, having a caricature. You know? and here is, here is a simple man castigating the uh, leaders of the Jews. It was rather a, uh, what, what shall I say, <clears throat> a laughable instance because that was not supposed to be. And then the story about the prodigal son. 
according to this uh, Jewish rabbi, it was uh, in their context, it was a very funny story because uh, nung, nung uh, makita nung tatay, parating na yung mata, when, when the father saw his son coming from way far, he saw his, uh, his son coming. That, that peculiar, uh, peculiar walk, peculiar movement of the body, you know, the father knew it was his son. And because of his joy, he ran, you know, you know, you cannot run with the, uh, with the attire that uh, you know they have here in the Middle East, you know. <laughs> this uh, long, uh, long uh, clothes by men, right? That was during the time of Jesus, uh, they were wearing this kind of uh, uh, men's dresses. And in order for uh, the man or the father to run and meet his son, he actually has to raise, you know, the, the uh, hem of the garment, you know, and tie it so that he could run freely. And to, to the Jews, that was hilarious. Pag nakitaan ka ng mga legs, kahit na yung mga lalaki, nakakatawa sa kanila. So it was, uh, many of his stories were actually funny stories. And I could just imagine when Jesus was telling those stories, that people were laughing and enjoying his stories. Now, how do we know? Because the Bible describes a sociable and joyful Jesus. Unfortunately, he has been portrayed, you know, we, we have a wrong concept of a holy man. Because Jesus Christ is no doubt a holy man. He was a holy man when he was on earth. No doubt about that. You know? But our concept of holy man is one that is always sober, you know, never smiling. <laughs> much less laughing. Lagi serioso. Always a uh, short, serious looking man. That's how we picture a holy man. Yung, uh, titignan mo yung mga Jesus na portrayed sa mga, kwan, eh, sa mga films. Yung tinatawag sa Pilipino na hindi makabali ng tabote. Right? And so, his uh, steps are numbered. <laughs> that's that's not that's not the real Jesus. How do we know? All right, our uh, our uh, uh, passages, key passages, are taken from Luke 7, 32, 33 to 34. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say, he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, look, a gluten and a one wine binder, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Now, since we live, how many centuries? not centuries, but two millennia, right? 2,000 years. We are 2,000 years far removed from the time of Jesus. Itong, uh, ito, itong, itong uh, account na ito. And so we need to know, we need to know the context, the social context of the time when Jesus Christ uh, was living on this earth. John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say he has a demon. Now, John the Baptist was the last of the Old Testament prophets. That's according to Jesus Christ himself. In Matthew 11, right? In Matthew 11, uh, Jesus said, the law and the prophets were until John. In other words, 
those Old Testament prophets were until John. He was the last. Okay? He was the last of the Old Testament prophets. <clears throat> now, the prophets in the Old uh, Testament times were being persecuted by Israel themselves. Very few of the prophets were actually honored by Israel during their time when the prophets were alive. Like for instance, uh, David was a prophet, but he was also the king. And so he was revered by, uh, he was revered by the Israelites. He was very well respected. But aside from few prophets in Israel, most of the prophets in Israel were persecuted by the Israelites themselves. That is why when Jesus rebuked the Pharisees and the leaders of uh, the Jewish people during his time, he said, who among the prophets did your forefathers not persecute? They were persecuted. The saying goes, no prophet is accepted or popular in his own house. Now, the reason for that is because prophets were the uh, spokespersons of God to Israel. God spoke to the prophets and the prophets uh, brought his messages to Israel. But most of the time, the uh, the messages of the prophets were actually rebuked. They were rebu rebuked to uh, priests, to kings. By the way, of the many uh, kings Israel had, there were only five who were good. You know, and the rest of them were all uh, evil. <clears throat> and so... The prophets would uh, receive word from the Lord to rebuke the leaders of Israel, to rebuke the priest, to rebuke the king, to, to rebuke the princess. And what did, what did they do? They did not accept the rebuke. Right? Isaiah was called the troubler of Israel. And so what they did was to go after the prophets. And they killed many of the prophets. Do you know how uh, how our Old Testament came into being? How they were compiled? At first, the Bible were uh, only five books. The, the book of Moses, right? Gen Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, uh, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Okay? Those were the first five books. There were no other books at that time, you know, during the time of Moses. But after the time of Moses, they started compiling the uh, books written by the prophets. And you know what? What happened was, in most cases, in most cases, what happened was Israel uh, had killed the prophet and they buried him, right, as an enemy of the state. But then he, the, the prophet left, you know, uh, a writing with prophecies sent of decades after that or even uh, centuries after that. What the prophet wrote became true. You know, what the prophet prophesied came to came, came true. And when the pro, what the prophets uh, prophesied came true, they say, "Oh, this is a real prophet from God." Let us include this writing, you know, to our uh, scriptures. That's how the rest of the Old Testament were added, you know, to the first five books of Moses. They killed the prophet, but then you know, they realized after decades and after centuries, oh, this is the prophet of God. 
you remember uh, the the Pharisees? They said, "Oh, you know, if we were alive during the time of our forefathers, we should not have murdered the prophets." And that is when Jesus Christ said, "Yeah, you are the sons of the murderers." Because they murdered the prophets, and they they only considered them as prophets from God after what they have written and prophesied came true. And they realized, oh, especially uh, like uh, Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah was uh, was killed by the Israelites, but then after centuries. No, in fact, uh, only only one century, because uh, Isaiah wrote 700 uh, BC, right? Isaiah was written 700 BC, and Isaiah wrote about Israel being attacked by the Babylonians, and century after that, the Babylonians attacked Israel in 582 BC. So only more than 100 years passed. And when they saw that everything that uh, Isaiah prophesied came true, then they realized Isaiah was a prophet from God. And they have added the writings of uh, Isaiah to the Hebrew scriptures. That's how they uh, they compiled these uh, books, 39 books of the Old Testament. And so, John the Baptist was one of, or the last of the Old Testament prophets. You will be wondering, why was he uh, living in the desert? Why? Because they were being persecuted. The prophets were always being persecuted. Just like the prophets before him, right? They were being persecuted. And so, if you are persecuted, where will you go? You will not go to where uh, many people could recognize you. Especially if uh, you are a prophet and you are a notorious person in Israel. Everybody knew the prophet. But uh, in a bad way. You know? This is the problem of Israel. Instead of, oh, this is the messenger from God. No. <laughs> and so, like for instance, uh, Elijah. He, he was uh, hiding uh, in a cave. <laughs> Why? Because be, he was being hunted. And most of these prophets were being hunted by uh, the Israelites. Because they would not listen to the word of the Lord being delivered by these prophets. Because most of the time, he, they deliver rebukes to Israel. And Israel did not want them. Alright, so, John the Baptist was living in uh, the desert. He was actually hiding. But when the, when the Lord had, had the message for uh, Israel, John the Baptist will be brought by the Holy Spirit where the people could listen to him. And then, after that, he will disappear again. Ganyan po yung one, mga prophets. Pagkatapos ba, i-deliver yung uh, yung uh, rebuke na dala ng mga uh, pan, pag, na, dala nila, galing sa Panginoon. Tumatakbo na po sila kung may iwas na dahil ang susunod nun, pagkatapos sila masabi yung review, ahantingin na sila. Okay? So John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine and you say he has a demon. So parang uh, if you know what a hermit is, sa atin, hermitan nyo, tawag nila yung ayaw makipag-sociable, ah, makipag-socialan. Uh, eh, Nandun lang sa bundok. That was John the Baptist. But now, 
Here is another person, our Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, the Son of Man has come eating and drinking. And you say, look, a gluten and a wine biber, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Now, who were the tax collectors and who were the sinners being mentioned in uh, the Gospels? Tax collectors were Jews who were actually collecting taxes for the Romans. Right? They were Jews, but they were collecting taxes and giving these taxes to the Romans. And they, they had some commission. Mga commissioners po sila. Now, the more taxes they could collect, the bigger is the commission, naturally. So what these Jews used to do was to blow up, you know, the, the uh, taxable taxable amount of these Jews by uh, by uh, what do you call this uh, wrongly calculating. You know? They cheat them so that they could they could uh, gather more taxes and their uh, commission would be bigger. And so these Jews who were tax collectors were hated by their fellow men. Sila po yung nanggigipit sa kanilang mga kapwa hudyo para sa ganun yung kanilang tax ay lumaki. Lumaki yung commission nila at yung uh, uh, pagkatapos ng commission nila ang ibibigay nila sa Roman uh, Empire. And so they were they were looked down as traitors. These Jews, tax collectors, were treated like traitors. Okay? They were considered the scum of Jewish society. <clears throat> what about the sinners? The sinners being mentioned here, if you will see the other translations, more modern translations, this is sinners. Uh, is translated as prostitutes. And they are really the ones mentioned here as sinners. These are women, Jews. Yeah? These, these are Jewish women who actually sell their bodies to the Roman uh, occupiers. You remember, when it, remember this? When we had the two American bases uh, in the Philippines, Air base in Clark and the uh, naval base in Subic. Olongapo City and Angeles City became the dens of pinatawag nating uh, kalapating mabababa ang liban. Yung nagbibili po ng panandali ang alib. When, wherever there are four Remember this, wherever there are foreign armies in a country, you will always send prostitutes. Why? Because these soldiers, right, who came from different uh, uh, parts of the Roman Empire, were far from their families, from their wives. And so they will get uh, momentary pleasures where they were. And they will get these women, and there were uh, Jewish women who would sell, you know, to these Roman soldiers. So these were the companies of people that Jesus wa was found or was seen, not once, not twice, okay, but many times. These were this company of people. You know what? You will not be uh, called a gluten and a wine biter if they have seen you eating and drinking once, twice, thrice. In order to have this reputation, yeah, Jesus must have been seen many times with these people eating and drinking. And in the context of the uh, Jewish society, if you eat and drink with someone, 
it means that you are accepting him into your fellowship. That is the uh, meaning of eating and drinking with somebody in the Jewish culture. That means whoever whoever you are with, eating with or drinking with, it means that you are accepting that person. That was the uh, social uh, meaning of eating and drinking with another in the Jewish culture. So here is Jesus Christ eating and drinking with these kinds of people that the Jewish uh, people themselves were hating. But it was with this kind of people that Jesus was seen often. Kung minsan dalawang beses lang makita, eh di ka naman magkakaroon ng, what? ng reputation na uh, ganito. Jesus Christ never turned down an invitation. In other words, Jesus was a party goer. Bisa na nakupa na maraming na dapat ha? Party goer si Jesus. Read, read the, the Gospels. Wala po siyang pinahihindi ang invitasyon para kumain. Omar party. Be, be these uh, tax collectors and sinners or the Pharisees. Jesus Christ was invited several times by the Pharisees. He never turned down an invitation to a party. Where did Jesus perform his first miracle? In a wedding party. Party goer to Jesus Christ. And I will tell you, you cannot be a party goer if you are not sociable. Tama? <laughs> and you will not be invited, right? You will not be invited if you will just, during the party, you will just sit in a corner speaking to no one, right? Hindi kayo imbitahan. Kaya kayo imbitahan. Dahil alam nila, pagka nandun ka, you will be the life of the body. Yeah. And Jesus Christ, wherever he was invited, he was the life of the body. Itong mga to, tax collectors and sinners, madalas magpati ito. And you know why? Because they were not being accepted by the general Jewish population. So, sila sila na, abay, magparty tayo. You know, sometimes parties can uh, forget, you know, the, the, the cheers of the people. Makakalimutan nila yung mga masasakit na sinasabi sa kanila ng mga tao. Eh, paano? Magsasaya ka eh. Magpapati eh. Kakain tayo. And then, uh, they will be. And what do you usually uh, see in parties? The Jewish parties are no different from our parties. Believe me. What do you normally, when you go to a party, uh, will the people be, what? Lonely? Huh? Not talking to each other. Pagka may party, nandiyan na yung tawanan, nandiyan na yung uban, halakakan, nandiyan na yung biruan, nandiyan na yung... That's the party. Now, if you were to go to the party and uh, do not open your mouth and uh, you know, just sit there, you might just as well do that at home. Hindi <laughs> ka na. Hindi ka ako, hindi ka natatawagin kiloy naman po. Pumunta pa sa party, eh. ang lungkot-lungkot naman. So here is the Lord Jesus Christ. Laging kasama nito mga, he, he was always in the company of tax collectors and uh, prostitutes. 
because we had uh, a mission. No? His mission was to uh, bring healing to these uh, people. Jesus said, when he was being uh, questioned, why are you? Why? Why is your master always uh, seen with uh, this kind of people? And Jesus said, knowing what was their, what was in their minds, Jesus said, only the sick people need doctor. Those who are not sick, they don't need doctor. It does not mean that the Pharisees, uh, the Pharisees are not were not sick during Jesus' time. No. In fact, their, their uh, sickness was fatal, more fatal than this, uh, uh, these tax collectors and, uh, and sinners. But they didn't know it and they would not recognize it. They would not admit it. To them, they are spiritually whole. No sickness spiritually. When in fact, they were the sickest persons during the time of Jesus Christ. And so, sarcastically, Jesus said, oh, you're not sick. You don't need a doctor. But these people are sick. And those people who need, uh, those people who are sick need the doctor. I am the doctor. Right? So, he, he was found in the company. And therefore, uh, you know, he got the reputation of being a uh, gluten, right? But I can tell you, uh, Jesus did not overeat. Right? When when you overeat, they say you are a gluten. In other words, you eat more than what is necessary, you know, to nourish your body. Okay. <clears throat> Mas ma mas magandang pakinggan yung bakanan kumain niyan kaysa dun sa masiba yan. <laughs> dito, your reputation ni Jesus Christ dito, okay, hindi magandang kumain, eh, hindi masiba. Yan, yan ang reputation niya. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, Jesus knows moderation. He, he only ate he, what was necessary for him to he nourished physically. <clears throat> and he drank wine. Now, many people, especially those who who are, uh, you know, very strict about uh, about Christian behavior, right? They say Jesus Christ uh, did not drink wine, but he drank only grape juice. You know what? <clears throat> During that time, they have not invented what we now call as pasteurization. Right? Wala pa, wala pa si Louis Pasteur nung panahon na yun para ma-invent yun. Itong pasteurization, right? Pwede, pwede mong katasin ng ubas, right? Tapos ipapasteurize mo yan. Hindi siya magpe-perment. But grape juice, right? Once it is uh, pressed at tinalabas mo na yung kanyang kwan, juice, right? It will start to ferment. It will start to ferment. That is why uh, the wine, uh, the wine maker said, God made grape juice. You know? Purposely. To be made into wine. And so don't think that the, the wine that is written here is just grape juice. This is this is fermented grape juice. Right? <clears throat> you remember when uh, Jesus performed his first miracle? When he turned water into wine? Usually, they serve the best wine, the aged wine, at the start, you know, at the start of the party, when people are not drunk yet. Once people got drunk, they will serve the less quality wine. Why? 
because no no one can tell the difference now. They are already, they are already drunk. Kain na no ibig sabihin mo diyan, masarap. Right? Kasi ko na yung kanilang uh, perception, their perception of what is good and what is bad wine is no longer there. And so, when Jesus Christ, when they ran out of wine, they called the Lord Jesus Christ. And he performed his first ever miracle. He turned water into wine. And when this wine was served, you know the comments of the guests? We, you, we normally serve the best wine you know, at the beginning of the party. Why you have just brought this best wine now? Yung po ay talagang alak. At para sa kanila, tulad din naman ngayon, yung best wine, yung matinatagal na talaga, meron 5 years, meron 7 uh, years. Uh, the longer wine is stuck, right? the better para dun sa mga kwanto, para mangingin. So don't, don't think that they only use uh, grape juice unfermented dito sa Palato. No. Kaya lang, <clears throat> drinking wine per se, right, is not sin. Getting drunk is sin. Right? Getting drunk. Pag nalasing ka na, ibig sabihin nagkasalang na. Kaya yung kaibigan ko, sabi niya. Kaya ako, ang limit ko, isang bote lang. <laughs> Pero pag naubos na yung isang bote, inalok pa siya, wala nang limit yun. <laughs> right? Yun po. Yung misan, pinig tinutwist ng mga panito, mga kristyano, para sabihin, oy, hindi kayo dapat na uminom ng alak. Right? Ang tawa pong kwan, huwag kayong maglasing. Yan po ang kwan. Dahil ang pag naglasing ka, yan ang kasalanan. <coughs> Meron naman po talagang kwan, umiinom, na hindi naman nalalasing. Kaya rin ba, most of the Europeans and Americans, ha, they drink Ha? They drink. Kasi sa, sa kanila, pagka uminom sila, umiinit yung katawa nila. Pero hindi naman pa, hindi sila na-alter yung kanila. Okay? <laughs> Kaya ka pa, uh, okay lang sa kanila. In fact, uh, uh, the Apostle Paul, dahil merong stomach problem si Juan Timothy, okay, you drink the wine. It'd be great. Just you. Ang sinasabi niya, why? Why talaga yun? Right. So, si Jesus Christ, uminom siya. Okay? Let us not twist the record, the biblical record, and the context of this. You know? Pero hindi siya nagkasik. I can guarantee you that he was never drunk even once. Alam ni Jesus Christ, ang hirap sa atin, hindi natin alam yung limit. <laughs> si Jesus Christ alam niya. <laughs> Alright? <clears throat> okay. So narito ang ating Panginoon sa Kristo. Aba? Eh, di, hindi ka pwedeng maging party goer na hindi ka sa sabo. Hindi ka pwedeng maging life. You cannot be the life of the party if you are not a joyful and sociable person. So I can guarantee you Jesus Christ, when he was on earth, was a sociable and a very joyful person. Another, another uh, proof is Jesus Christ was very much liked by the kids, by the children. You know what? They, the disciples had to prevent the children coming to him. Right? Sabihin ko sa inyo, 
if you are not a joyful right sociable person children will not approach you i know somebody a friend of mine you know uh he was he he is an indian and i hope he is still alive right? when i was in uh, bahrain <laughs> this this brother you know was so was so joyful he will play with kids and he will roll you know <laughs> roll over yeah, on the floor with the kids and that is why whenever you know there there is a party right the birthday party anniversary party when he is invited <laughs> the kids would like to be around him always and he would pray with them and i can tell you jesus christ was at play with kids that's why he, they liked him wherever he goes uh, kids follow and the disciples had to uh, speak to these uh, mothers please please don't let your uh, children come you know to the master and what did jesus say do not hinder the children from coming to me if he was that lonely man being portrayed in the film i can guarantee you, children would not like it eto yung mga what eto yung mga nangyari sa ating panginoong Jesucristo na kumisan we we overlook this uh, happenings in the life of Jesus Christ we should be careful in analyzing this so that we will get the uh, you know the real thing that happened during the time of Jesus Christ the real Jesus was a sociable and joyful person he was the life of the party wherever he goes he goes to the party of the pharisee remember simon the leper the simon the pharisee he was invited by simon and he went and again he was the uh, life of the party wherever he goes he was the life of the party and so let's let's not have this picture of the lord jesus christ you know be with the sad look on his face no smile oh what nothing is hipin ang malulungkotin ang ating panginoon sa Cristo when he was uh, i can tell you when we meet the lord jesus christ face to face i i'm i'm expecting him to really be very joyful very good all right so yeah for knowing the the real jesus right <clears throat> and hope and i hope na you know when see the, the uh, parables of jesus christ many of these parables were actually banquets reasons the kingdom of god is like unto a king is that who invited these guests right first he invited the royalties they did not come so what he, the, the king did he invited the common people right go into the highways and byways and invite everybody yung mga royalty yung po yung mga israelites they did not come party to party marami siyang uh, para po party and in fact if you read isaiah uh, 25 the chapter where uh, jesus christ was prophesied to remove death you know the part let me see i think i had this in my Let's see if I had this in my I 
Isaiah. In my uh, slides, <laughs> Isaiah describes the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ as a feast. Right? It is a feast of aged wine and the best of meats. In other words, uh, real party. Because in that party, he said, he will remove the veil that covers all people. He will defeat death. You know, during that time when uh, uh, the penalty, penalty for a crime uh, is death penalty, they will either uh, shoot should be criminal, right, with an arrow, or they will cut his head. And before cutting the head, they will cover the head, right, with black uh, veil. This is what the the uh, analogy or the imagery that Isaiah used. The day is coming, right, when he will remove the veil from all people. In other words, he will defeat death. <clears throat> and it will be a banquet of aged wine and, uh, and meats, yung karne. Because he will swallow up death in victory. That was the prophecy of Isaiah about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is likened into a huge banquet. Masaya, right? Paano ba naman hindi masaya, right? Ang sabi ni Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is upon me, right? and I was sent to heal the brokenhearted, to bring good news to the poor, right? To set the captives free. Aba, eh, that's, uh, those are things for rejoicing. Tapos ang Panginoong Iso Cristo mismo yung parang may sakit na hindi mo... Paano, paano kang kwan? Paano kang magbabalita ng isang kwan? Eh hindi ka paniniwalaan kung uh, ako po ay may dalang magandang balita po sa inyo. Ang lungkot-lungkot naman ang mukha mo. Right? Ni hindi kang mingiti, hindi ka. Ang sino paniniwala sa iyo Pagka meron ka mabuting balita, nakikita dapat yan sa, sa mukha mo. Oh. I, I was sent to bring good news to the poor. Kaya nga yung pong one, yung pong uh, malungkotin yung Jesus, eh hindi po yung tunay na Jesus sinasabi sa inyo. Pagka yung kilala niyo yung mal yung kagalan yung Jesus eh hindi mo mingiti ha? hindi tumatawa katukayo lang po katukayo lang so here we are with the real Jesus na very joyful very sociable kung kayo gustong gusto nyo yung mga taong uh, sociable. Dahil yung mga taong sociable, approachable po yan. Yung mga taong yan. Magugustuhan niya talaga si Jesus Christ. He is the most sociable, joyful, and the most approachable person you will ever know. Yan ang ating tunay na Panginoon si Christ. Alright, so Sa susunod, meron naman tayong aspetong titingnan sa ating Panginoon sa Kristo para lalo natin siya makilang. Okay? <clears throat> For the time being po, tayo po muna ay magtatapos dito sa ating uh, pinag-aaralan. And then, uh, we will continue with the series uh, next Friday.
Wednesday night. Magbaba kasi yun po. Now, uh, <clears throat> meron tayong mga elders sa Doha na punto sila. Uh, Dadalaw po sila rito. Magre-review po sila. Uh, and probably one or two two times uh, kahit siguro magpun ako mag uh, takit online para po hindi naman completely na fun. Hindi tayo magpang isa kahit sa online. <laughs> Alright, so let's bow our heads in prayer. Pasalamatan natin ang mga Panginoon sa ating pong pinag-aralan. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for uh, <clears throat> bringing us a, an aspect of the character of the Lord Jesus Christ which we often neglect as Christians. Thank you, Lord, for now we know that Jesus is the most uh, sociable and joyful person and most approachable person that we could ever meet. Father, we thank you for uh, guiding us to know the real Jesus. We thank you, the Holy Spirit, for uh, guiding us and showing us who he really was. We thank you, Lord, that uh, our perception of the Lord Jesus Christ would be would become clearer and clearer as we go along with this uh, uh, series of knowing the real Jesus. Lord, we pray that you will continue to bless the remaining parts of our service tonight. Forgive us where we have fallen short of your glory. This we pray in Jesus' name.